Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 22nd. When I got up this morning to get my cup of coffee, I was walking across and uh, looked across the room onto my computer screen and I saw a little pop-up chat box and my friend Darth Peachy Chris from Gibraltar had sent me a pretty good cutting news article. It's interesting, This uh, not just because it has to do with Sony, but because of the fact that uh, this is not being covered very well. He sent me the Guardian article, and I did look up another American business type of article about it, but evidently Sony has been um, brought down into, uh, as far as their bonds, they've been brought down into junk bond status, and the last one to downrate them was Moody's. They were downrated by another bond rating company, but now Moody's has uh, downrated them to junk bond status, and um, this is just not being covered, not being reported on very much. So I'm uh, really glad he sent me this article here. It seems like they're really bleeding money in a lot of different areas, and the main part of this article is talking about the fact that Sony is selling off their uh, bio computers division to a Japanese investment firm. They're going to keep a 5% stake in the company themselves, but basically they're getting out of that, and they're also going to um, cut the television part of their company into a separate division. They've been losing money for a long time on that. I think the last time they said they made a profit on that was maybe 2008 and then just constantly losing money even though the quality of the TVs have always been great. They've just not been able to make any money in it. So um, that division is going to be separated off and I'm thinking that says in the future that if they don't end up turning some kind of a profit they may end up being sold off or closed down whatever. But yeah, it looks like uh, there was no, the, the interesting thing about this whole article too is there was no mention of what's going on with the camcorders, which I think Sony has always pretty much led the way, especially in the sound part of it, and uh, the action cams uh, being vloggers and moto vloggers. To me, that was kind of important to see what they had to say about that, but nothing, which I don't know, that may be a good thing, maybe a bad thing. I don't really know. They don't, uh, they're not talking about selling off any of that or losing money on it, so. Who knows, maybe that's break even right at this point. But yeah, uh, to have a big gun like Sony be in that kind of financial trouble and uh, not really have it being reported on. When you do uh, search for reports on news on Sony, it's a lot about their new innovations and things like that, which I'm sure they're still going to go forward to. But it looks like the only two areas that are really keeping Sony afloat right now is some good movie hits because they're going to... Uh, um, talk about moving more into content production rather than uh, products. So they've got some movie hints, and the PlayStation 4 has been making enough profit to keep them afloat. But, uh, yeah, losing a few hundred million dollars, um, I guess it's 300 pounds, so that would be, what, about four or five hundred million dollars. Um, they're closing up th 30 stores and laying off about 10,000 people. So um, sometimes even the big names and stuff like that end up going down. I remember when Polaroid and Kodak, it just seemed like a, Years and years ago, they would last forever, but uh, sometimes the mighty can fall down. So thanks for sending that in, Chris, and uh, thank you guys, all of you. I mean, because of this uh, show and because of the viewers and stuff like that, I'm able to bring stuff like this to you because uh, I've got some of the best viewers around of any show. I mean, you guys keep a watch for me, and you give me material like this. Um, this next one's from my buddy Sam Crow, 10, from Sweden, Gura. This is NASA Beck's study says humanity is pretty much screwed. Um, it's just an overall article based on, let me bring this up here on my browser here so I can get to it right away. Um, it's based on, uh, well, let me just read the first part of it. Hope you've enjoyed Civilized Life, folks, because a new study sponsored by NASA's Goddard Space Center says the world's industrial societies are poised to collapse under the weight of their own unsustainable appetite for resources. There goes the weekend and everything after it for the rest of our lives. Um, this is based on an independent study from the university uh, utilizing search tools developed for a separate NASA activity. Um, I don't think really even need tools like that to kind of think about the fact if you're a student of history, um, every kind of society, every big empire, um, pretty much everything in history says that every everything that's large and technologically advanced eventually comes to an end and you back up. I mean, We've had the Roman Empire has fallen. We've had the Persian Empire has fallen. I mean, it's just bound to happen. I mean, it just depends on how far we will fall back and when is it going to happen. I mean, is it going to happen a few years from now? Is it going to happen 100 years from now that all of a sudden we'll go back to, uh, you know, maybe we could live and survive not too bad if we went back to the era of uh, landline phones and stuff like that. But if we lost all technology and ended up living kind of like the uh, Amish do and stuff like that, it might be hard on a lot of people. It might be uh, 
very difficult life struggle than to be able to live that way. But it's an interesting article. If you get a chance, to check it out. It's from Gizmodo.com. And next, this is from my friend Steve Arsenal. Um, he didn't send me this exact link, but uh, he told me about, after I was talking about the lights last week, those arc lights for you, it's quite costly. I mean, you pay several hundred dollars and you get an arc of LED light going around your bicycle's uh, tires. This is uh, a screw-on LED type of lamp that screws into the valve stem itself. So basically just the motion of your uh, of your uh, bike moving forward gives it an, an arc type of a, of a look to it. And I'll uh, put up a little picture of it here. And uh, the, these, the particular ones that I found are like $1.89 plus free shipping. So the cost is little or nothing. They've got like white, green, all kinds of different colors you can choose from. And for a buck eighty-nine plus shipping, it's uh, plus free shipping. Well worth the cost of it. And basically, uh, from most angles, somebody's going to see something like an arc light anyway because it produces a total circle. So um, the main thing is just getting somebody's attention when you're riding at night. And the next one I wanted to go along with that too. This is a lifehacker. Um, dot com article. It's a uh, make a bike light that turns on automatically. The way the guy does this circuit on this one, he uh, has a photodiode that actually shows when it gets dark or you go into a tunnel or you're riding at night that these automatically turn on. I would actually do a simpler circuit, though. Um, this is a light that you can see from the back of the bike. It straps onto the uh, seat of the bike. What I would do myself is I would put a little uh, IC555 timer on it and just have it turn on and stay on for a couple of hours and then turn itself off because LED lights take up so little energy. I mean, I don't really think you need it. If you were talking about incandescence, maybe it would make sense to turn them on and off every time you go into a, a tunnel or a shady area or something like that. But when you're talking LED lights, they use so little energy. I, I think just a timer would work fine with that. So to me, that's the modification I would make on the circuit. But if you're a little bit geeky and want to build your own circuit, um, this is a pretty, pretty cool article from Lifehacker. And... Uh, Next up, this is a Kickstarter project. It's called the Half Bike, and I'll put a little bit of the video up of this bike. It's it's uh, basically kind of like a stand-up tricycle, um, which to me is the one weakness of it. They're, uh, they've got 20-something days to go, and they're still not quite halfway to the $80,000 they need, so it may or may, may not even happen. But uh, the smallness of it is pretty cool. Now, if they made the back two wheels on this thing to where they would... Uh, turn about 90 degrees and lock in place, you could probably fold this thing down, especially that top part if you could fold it down, fit the whole thing into a briefcase size uh, package. So um, that's what I'm really looking about is people that can come up with ideas of bikes that fold up into a small package where you can take it on mass transit very easy. But still, I mean, if you're an athlete, this would probably be good. But for the average person not having a place to sit or any type of seat on it, um, that may be the thing that really causes this to, to not make it, at least in my mind. So last up, I have a guest with me on my show today, and uh, I don't know, some of you probably like me like to do little experiments in your own home and try stuff out. doesn't matter whether it uh, works or whether it fails, it's just kind of fun to do. Well, my friend Brenda, M MZ Nighthawk, Ms. Nighthawk, she's decided to uh, join the TDD report once in a while and do uh, some little uh, reports herself. So take a look at this. I wanted to film a neat little experiment I saw on YouTube um, this is something that I really hadn't thought about before. It, if you press the button on a remote, um, obviously it has infrared light. You can't see it. You might see a red light, but you don't see anything actually with a naked eye. So if you press it and you're looking through the camera, you can see the light flashing. And you can't see that with a naked eye. That's not something we can see. So... It makes me wonder then what else I could videotape, uh, what other kind of light that I could see. It's it's um, kind of a mystery about things going on around you that you don't know about because you can't see it. So I'm going to be kind of making some videos and seeing if I can capture anything that I you can't see with the naked eye, but the camera can see. So that'll be my little experiment. So that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.